Patrick Clark. Patrick Clark, yes, we are here to talk about your latest, maybe even not your latest, you're a very busy man. You're here to talk about your project with Newbie Drone. This is the Newbie Drone Hummingbird Project Mockingbird Edition. Look at that. And, and, and for those who don't know you, what who who are you and what makes you qualified to do this? I, I don't know what makes me qualified to do it, <laughs> but what I'm known for is um, when people do angle racing with tiny whoops, um, when we started using Betaflight and stuff, I figured out how to make them fly better than the old school ones. And it just has kind of continued on. And it's kind of, I don't know if it's a passion or just I can't <laughs> let it go um, to keep on making uh, angle mode uh, racing more more advanced. Yeah. The DRL of angle racing. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you're the, uh, you're the, uh, Thomas, the, 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 what's his name? Carol. Shelby? The, the, yeah. the, the yep. Shelby? Shelby of Ford and Cobra and Shelby. You're the Shelby of Tiny Whoops. He had That's giant right. V8 motors. You have, well, it's almost the same. <laughs> <laughs> but you no, are, you, not, not even you've been tuning Tiny Whoops and micro, not just Tiny Whoops, micro quads. Uh, for how long? How long have you been doing this? 2016, early 2016. Um, I, well, whenever the very first um, Beta Flight Whoop FC came out, because we were, like we talked about last time, we were all using the, the Blade and Duck Tricks as, mm -hmm. our, as our racers, right? That was what Jesse was really into. And uh, yeah, so since then, that was Beta Flight 3, what would that have been? 3-2? probably three, two, three, yeah. three, yeah. something like that. So, yeah. and then, yeah. So normally what you do is you take one of these quadcopters and you gen you create a tune for it and then you put it, you've actually, since the last time we spoke, I see you've got a website now uh, and people yeah. can go get your tunes. You used to distribute all these tunes almost exclusively like via Google drive documents. I felt like it I was like in some. It wasn't supposed to be a thing, Joshua. It was just <laughs> sharing with a couple of people. I felt like I was in some kind of secret underground club <laughs> from the days before the internet. As That's like, right. you know, here's the word doc. We're transmitting it over the bulletin board system. You got to, you know, right. like get a uh, copy of the anarchist's cookbook, <laughs> you know. Uh, but similar. now you have a website. But this is, you're taking it one step further. You've partnered with Newbie Drone and it just ships with your tune on it. It's just ready to go. Yeah, it's a it's a whole new thing. Like, you know, uh, each release, um, you know, I, I refine the tune for more pro level um, racing because, you know, that's when I go to the Tiny Whip Invitational, I'm racing against Vanover and Nurk and Jet. And right. So and that crowd has become it's become I don't ever want to say Tiny Whip Racing is serious, but it is a little more serious where like People are going like Rab and AK. Yeah. They are racing five inch and tiny whoops. That makes like what the brushless stuff that I do and all those releases are for that cutting edge. But what I realized was there's a whole other crowd like I was um, that getting into it. If I step into the GT for GT, you know, that Shelby uh, worked right. on, I'm going to kill myself, right? It's not going right. to be a fun day. Right. So I'm into racing, uh, car racing. And I was like, well, what's the Miata? Carol, Sh Carol Shelby Carol was his Shelby, name. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, Frank, what did I say? Frank? I was gonna we're yeah, going to edit. You should correct. I, I couldn't remember who, when, yeah. what his first name was. We're going to edit that out. I'm going to. Yeah. Uh, here, wait, wait, wait. For, 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 Carol. We'll just have the editor put that back there. Or I said Frank. Right, your lips okay, will say perfect. Frank. Yeah, no, it'll be fine. We'll say Carol. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Carol. But so <laughs> instead of that, I wanted like a, a spec class Miata. And the thing about a spec class Miata, if people don't know, is you basically buy a Miata, you put this kit on it, or actually um, even go-kart racing, right? You have that 100cc class. You can just go buy a cart and go mm -hmm. race. Now, yeah. are you going to get beat by other people that have higher spec machines? Sure. But what you need to do is put in laps, right? You need to learn how to race. Yeah. And so that's that was the goal with Newbie Drone was what could we build that was cheap, competitive, and had the core of what you're going to take when you go all the way up to 
the fastest brushless class. And that's what we came up with with the, this uh, the Hummingbird um, Project Mockingbird edition. That's why I didn't motors for one reason. I, I like that analogy. Um, I've talked to um, Aaron Ciotti, who you probably know, and and many people don't know that he used to be a driving instructor, a race driving instructor. And he has said that the times in his life when he felt closest to death was when he took somebody out and they had a, you know, an 800 horsepower Dodge Viper and they didn't right. know at all how to drive it. And it's like, you right. need to put in the time on something underpowered to get your fundamentals down, something inexpensive. And the, those laps that you put in in the Miata are going to pay dividends eventually when you graduate up to the big boy quads. Yep. But just going straight to the big boy quads won't actually make you any better because you'll just blow out every turn because you're just going too fast. Yep. And we're in a race. You know, I know in a lot, even in the Project Mockingbird group, like what's the fastest motors? What's the fastest props? What's the lightest I can get um, to go the fastest in a straight line? And, you know, my my thinking is, well, how do you do in the corners? Because you're going right. to win races in corners. You're going to win races getting off the line. Um, and really, uh, when you do times, let's say that this brush guy is a half a second per lap slower mm -hmm. in a three lap race. Well, if you blow out corners and you crash and you're not used to all that power, it doesn't matter how that you're a half a second faster per lap because you're crashing the floor and skidding across it trying to turtle mode. So yep. sometimes being slow is fast. And what, that's the, that's the one, whole thing. One crash is gonna make you lose any time you would have gained by having a faster, a quote unquote, faster quad. There's no doubt exactly. about that. So your goal was this to create, was to create an inexpensive, durable, reasonably fast, but not so powerful that a beginner couldn't handle it, uh, quadcopter so that people could get into whoop racing. And it sounds yep. like also to sort of preserve, I've, I've really enjoyed going to whoop races because you go to a five inch race and whether it's, people are like, people are so serious at five inch races, especially yep. as you get to bigger races. And that vibe is just not there at any you could go to the Tiny Whip Race at International Open, and you're right that when like when the famous racers show up, it does get a little serious. Like Vanover yeah. never isn't 100 percent wanting to win a race. Exactly. But there's still just a much lower stakes, much more fun and friendly vibe with whip racing, and it's definitely something that's more accessible, I think, to people who might be a little yeah. scared. By five inch. We're all competitive, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that's funny because, you know, the last uh, Tiny Whoop uh, race we had with Vanover, he was all competitive. We all were, but it was like Vanover light because, mm -hmm. you know, then you, you laugh about it. Like you're getting so serious about, you know, this tiny little thing and some, but then, you know, Jesse face punches you with your, with a tiny whoop. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the, the last <laughs> race I was at was held at a, at a bar slash restaurant slash wing joint. And thank goodness we were indoors because everybody there was drinking. <laughs> yeah. Right. The FAA would not have approved. And you just, you can't do that at five inches, but we were all having no. a good time. It was a no. blast. Um, and that's something that's definitely very, very worth uh, helping people get into. Now, yeah. you made another interesting choice with this one, and that is that this is not a beta flight flight controller. It's not running beta flight. It's not running EMU flight. What is it running? It is running silverware. And we did that for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, there's cost. Silverware boards are cheaper to produce. Um, but number two, silverware is where all of the great angle racing code comes from. Um, modern, right? Everybody kind of started with the core. But then for whatever reason in the brush world, when I was doing all the beta flight stuff, there was a whole bunch of people working on code for angle racing with the alien whoop boards right mm -hmm. in the brush days and it was all silverware and they went so far ahead of everybody because that's what they did right that the code that is in silverware for angle racing is still the best emu flight their code in angle racing actually is borrowed from silverware right. so it's still the core angle racing top tier um thing so it handles crashes better which is so important. Like you've been to races, you mm -hmm. crash, you're dead. 
right? Um, this silverware handles crashes better than anything still out there. Um, and I, Brush actually does too. I noticed that uh, the first time I flew a silverware board, one of the things I noticed was that I was with Betaflight Quadcopter. I don't want to overgeneralize, but a lot of the time you hit the wall and you either go and you stick to the wall, <laughs> the wall suck. Yeah. or you bounce off the wall. But even in angle mode, it doesn't recover quick enough right. for you to actually stay in the air. And the first time I flew a silverware board, I, I guess I just thought I was a better pilot because I kept hitting the wall yeah. or hitting things and it would just go <laughs> yeah, spin off and go. And it was yep. just, I'm um, still up. What am I still doing in the air? Which of course, if you're thinking about racing, that that is a real advantage. You know, and don't crash I, out and be able to continue your laps. Yeah. And I a hundred percent agree that if you put in laps, let's say that this is slower than, a, than the brushless. If you don't crash burn on the because you're going to say, Oh, there's no turtle mode either. Right. Cause it's brushed. Yeah, you don't, need, you don't need it because when you hit off the wall, you just spin and keep on going. Whereas a beta flight, uh, especially beta flight, does not recover um, better than silverware does. Yeah. So you just won't crash. You'll think you're better I, than you are, Joshua. I, I, well, I did actually literally have that experience. Um, I will say I think you're going to have to try really hard to convince me that I wouldn't prefer to have turtle mode. I mean, you... I, you eventually you're going to end up upside down and wish you had turtle mode, but right. So here's, but here's the thing. <laughs> Most tiny whip races are marshaled, right? It's not like five. Well, that's inch, true. Right? That's true. And in the ones that I've been to marshalling is quicker than turtle mode. Um, and, and by marshal, right. you mean somebody's just going to run and flip you over. Yep. Yeah. And like it's the tiny whip invitational. If you're not racing, you're, you're a marshal. And where we ended up, you wouldn't be able to turtle anyway. Interesting. Um, and most places that I've ever raced, the floors are slick. Turtle mode's not that great. Um, oh. You're going to panic. And if you're a beginner, trying to get turtle mode, turn it on, flip back yeah. over, remembering to turn it off. Like, let's just reduce it. Just like the Miata. It's a stick. It's yeah. gas, brake, clutch, point and go. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to concede the point, but <laughs> I'm going to acknowledge that you've made a compelling case. <laughs> it, it's one it's one of those things where it's like yes that all makes a lot of sense and yet still one time yes, i'm gonna no. end up upside yep. down in my living room and be like, and Damn, like why do i have to you, i don't have yep. to stand up but no you're right though that brushed motors again considering the cost brushed motors bring the cost down uh and uh brushed motors newbie drone did have a flight controller that would do turtle mode with brushed motors they, yep, but they still it do. was yep. it, uh, well, yeah they still do but this isn't it brushed motors traditionally nope. don't do turtle mode all right so and so no really turtle mode. not the greatest thing to turtle mode on a brushed motor uh, no. as it's not much really as good people for it, do is it? yeah 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 um so i would love to talk about the specific aspects of this tune the first thing I want to ask, though, is like, how do you tune silverware? Because silverware, in case people don't know, mm -hmm. you don't plug silverware into your computer. There's no beta flight configurator. It has an on-screen display and it can be configured with the on-screen display. There's a lot of like changing um, various parameters, but that's it. So how do you tune it? Yeah. Then? You know, um, so it's, you know, how beta flight, um, you go into a, a programming tool, right? Um, we use, uh, I think it's called Keel. Um, and it's just, you, you load up the project and I'm not a programmer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm an artist by trade and literally it's looking at lines of code. Um, but the beautiful thing is my buddy, Travis, not fast enough. Um, when he, so we're all using his branch of silverware, the not fast enough branch. Mm -hmm. He did an amazing job of annotating everything in it. Yeah. So a dummy like me can go in there and once you get in there it really is um oh you can look at the the pids you can look at the angle limits and all that and it it starts to make sense once you know the system um I see. but it's not like you can tune in osd right so it's, it's da -da 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 -da, compile block. it's reminding me of the days when i used to do arduino programming you would go into the sketch you would change the parameter you would compile it you would download yep. it to your arduino or to your flight controller and then you would yep. try it. And if it didn't work, you would just go back to your sketch. You would change the pro. You would literally just change the PIDs in the program and recompile yep. the program and reflash it every time. Um, yep. Yeah. 
So people and won't beauty, be able to change this tune at home, though, if they wanted to. Not can, that they would want to. Got, yeah, you can. It, on the bottom, you'll see there's um, by the in the middle of the motor ports, there's a little another port, and that's the programming port. Uh, I see. So they have a USB thing that you can load up the project. They have it on GitHub. You can I alter see. it yourself. Um, but here's what happened: like we, they had a silverware um, racer before, and back in the day, all the newbie drone pilots, we all flew it. That was our, our the one of choice. And all the team pilots started contacting me, saying, "Hey, I don't know how to program. I don't, I don't know silverware. Can you start tweaking stuff?" So this is like the culmination of what we learned with AK and Wimpy Dog and all the Arizona pilots and all the newbie drone pilots, we put it in here. So you don't really need to change anything. And that's, yeah. that's the point is put in laps. Don't worry about programming. Well, um, that is, that's true. Uh, that's true everywhere. I always say to people, people say, well, I just built my first quad and I flew it around the park and I'm ready to start tuning. And I'm like, no, you don't need to worry about tuning. You can barely fly the damn thing. You're not you're not at the limit of the tune already. Get yeah. faster, and when the tune starts holding you back, then start working on the tune. Um, but it's especially true with something like this because the hardware is fixed. People yeah. say, "Well, what's what's the perfect tune for my quad?" Well, you can't just copy somebody else's tune unless it's the exact same quad. Well, in this case, it is. This is the exact yep. same quad that all those guys are running, and so the tune is optimal uh, to to to. A, to a very high degree. Yeah, and, and even we'll talk about rates. Rates in angle mode is is not quite as personal as mm -hmm. in acro. Yeah. Because you have this this balance back. And what we decided on on this one, it was a, everybody in the newbie drone team gave me what they raced with rates wise and how they liked it. And when we looked at them, they're all like very, very similar. And I'm like, well, yeah. wait a second. If we're there, then why, why, if somebody learns this, then they can go to their brush list later and go, oh, what I didn't like about that was just this little thing. I wish y'all was not so twitchy, mm -hmm. right? And then they, they would have the understanding of what it is they uh, want to change. Whereas, like you were saying, when you first start, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So you should just fly it. And that's what well, we tried to do with this. Uh, the difference, I suppose, would be that somebody builds their first five inch and they're on the beta flight default PIDs. And maybe those PIDs are good for that quad and maybe they're not as good and they just don't know what they're missing. I guess you could argue that starting with something like this, you know you're starting with a good foundation. It's, it's, yep. it's the same hardware that the racers are using. It's the same tune that they're using. And so if you're slow, it's your fault. <laughs> no, it's, it's really true. And I, I've actually put the challenge out to AK. I'm like, dude, take this. And take your, you know, your brushless hummingbird, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me what your lap times are. How different are they mm -hmm. in reality? Because yeah. there are certain things that a, a brushed whoop does better than brushless. You'll hear the top pilots say they miss the linearity of a brushed motor. You'll hear pilots say, well, silverware, man, when it crashes, it powers out of it better than a brushless quad, even in an in emu flight. Mm. And it's because there's stuff you can do in a brush motor you can't do in a brushless one. Well, I'd, love to, the, I'd love to hear more about yeah. that. Yep. So in silverware, th this is the big difference between silverware and beta flight. And Travis is going to yell at me, not fast enough because I'll probably butcher this. But the basics are it puts motor power before uh, mixers and filters. So when it's, it's freaking out, it basically goes full power and tries to correct itself instead of figuring out, oh, is my D right? Is all that right? And then your gyro is going, ah! it figures that out. And that's why when you crash on a silver thing, it'll go and spin around and keep on going. That doesn't hmm. happen when we translate that over, even in brushless silverware code. Um, it just brushless motors don't do that. Well, that's interesting. Um, I would, I would argue that brushless, I mean, I would have argued that brushless, uh, brushless motors, I'm going to confuse myself with brushed versus brushless. <laughs> brushless motors being the uh, one that we use on the bigger quads with the ESC and brushed motors being the older style. I think mo I would argue that they're higher performance. They have like more torque. They, they have, in what way, I would really be really curious to hear about in what way the brushless motors or the brushed motors, damn it, I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> 
that the brush motors win. Like, uh, yeah, brushed. And it it really is in the code, right? Mm -hmm. And once again, this is what I learned from Travis is, so when he first started doing, trying to do brushless silverware, which turned Mm -hmm. into Quicksilver, he was like, okay, Mm -hmm. let's take how motor mixing and filtering and all of that works in brushed and put it onto brushless. It doesn't work. It actually makes it fly worse because you have too much power because you have quicker response. It's Mm. the limitation of the brushed motor that actually makes you able to max out power. I see. So since the brushed motor is less responsive and less powerful, it's safe for the PID controllers, for the flight controller to just go, ah, just full power. Right? Exactly. It's like going back to the Miata example, coming out of a turn on the Miata, you can just floor it. Yep. Coming out uh-huh. of the turn in a in an 800 horsepower sports car, if you floor it, you're going to just spin it out. You're dead. You yep, have to exactly. feather the throttle. And maybe the, yep. the flight controller just doesn't have the nuance to kind of feather the motors in, in the way that they need to. But with the yep. brushed motors or the brushed, yeah, with the brushed motors, it could just go full power and everything works out. Yep. And since you're first learning, you're crashing more. You're hit, actually not even crashing. You're hitting things more, hitting gates. Right. So, Absolutely. you know, you watch AK or RAB they rarely crash. So the benefits of a brush system doesn't help them out as much. Mm, interesting. Because, but if you're starting and you're hitting gates more, you're going to recover quicker and you're going to play, let's say you, you'll probably um, place higher in races just because you're using this type of system when you first start. Interesting. I think what you're saying then is that the brushed motors are better at crash recovery. The brush less motors are better in other ways in terms of yep. power, torque, but in terms of crash recovery, they actually don't do as well. Yep. yep. Specifically in silverware. And that's another reason why we didn't go beta flight. Um, beta flight actually hinders uh, motor power in brushed. Hmm. Hmm. And, Interesting. Um, yeah. So that's why Emu Flight took all the beta flight angle code out, ripped it out, and replaced it with silverware. So why are you running silverware and not Emu Flight then? Um, Another, you know, we wanted to keep costs down and right. we do have, uh, Emu flight isn't really on a full release yet. Gotcha. So we, at the time that we started this, which was this winter and then mm. of course pandemic hit, um, mm. Emu flight wasn't even really a thing yet. And we were just starting talking to them about putting some of that code in. Gotcha. Um, there is stuff going to happen with Emu flight, um, brushed and bl- brushless with, with, uh, several, uh, products, but. For this one, um, you got all the benefit. It was already baked in, and it was super easy because we'd been in development over a race season mm-hmm. to get all this feedback and choose the right thing as a starter kit type of thing. Gotcha. So this is available as a quad, a pre-built quad, obviously. That's a bind and fly. Um, are there any other kits that it's available in? Nope, like a ready-to-fly kit? Sky only. Okay. Nope. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah. They might come out with one with their controller, but what I tell people to do is get one of these. Make okay. sure you get the FR Sky. That's the Beta FPV the, Light Radio 2. Yep, Light Radio 2. It's what I actually used uh, in the final testing of this, and it's as simple as putting it into D8 mode, which is probably the hardest thing to do on the radio, <laughs> binding and flying. And gotcha. So that this is I it comes sale pre- now for... It comes yeah. pre-set up with the switches are all set up and everything all ready to yep. go. Yep. And nice. if you have if you have a Tyrannus um, X7, X Lite, 9, it, same thing. You can just okay. buy this, bind it, and it should just work. But if you're really just starting out, this is 50 bucks, let's say. It's 50 bucks? This is what? I actually it's on sale looked now at... for 46. Yeah, I actually hadn't 55. looked at the price yet. I'm shocked that it's that. That's yeah. that's That's a great price. And and if you're into brushless, I've had guys say, "Man, I gave up my brush stuff, but for fifty bucks, I'm going to buy one just to bash around the house." Yeah. Um, so right, fifty bucks. This is what forty. It's forty bucks. Yeah, like, forty forty yeah, five right? bucks. And then what I always recommend people getting is the Fat Shark Scout. Gotcha. Right. And it's hundred. I just changed mine with the little fox ear lollipop. Best you can DVR, get the, it's the same DVR the as the Orca. Fat Shark Scout is two hundred. The Fat Shark Recon is only around a hundred, right? Yeah, I think this is better. I think yeah. it's way better, especially with the DVR, because what you're going to do is you're not going to use these in a year as your I main you. goggle, but you're going to use you. the DVR because the DVR is 
super awesome. It's the same one oh. as the Orca, same one as the what's that little external one that immersion the makes? power play, same power play, same DVR. So gotcha. you're in 200 and oh, so 300 bucks and you can go racing. That's not um, bad. 300 bucks all in. I know it's not as cheap as some of these other like beta FPV has like the starter kit comes with this radio, but kind of crap goggles. And, um, well, and as we learned, as uh, we were trying to get this set up, <laughs> I was having trouble getting this set up. Um, the radio that comes with the beta FPV starter kit is the Bayang protocol only. It actually won't bind to this. You have to buy yep. the light radio. So it won't more fundamentally, it won't bind to any of your free sky quads. It's exactly. basically only usable with the beta FPV kit. Yep. Well, any other Bayang quad you happen to have, but you don't have any of those. Um, yeah, and, and it's uh, not bashing it, but theirs is a silverware one too, but it's not set up for racing. Right. Right. It's I actually have a review of that coming out. Uh, so uh, I'll put a link to that down in the video description if if it's out. I think this video is going to come out first. So when okay. you go and, when you go and look and the link isn't there, it's because it hasn't come out yet. Please don't yell at me. But uh, I, I thought that that quad Joshua here, <laughs> <laughs> that a... quad, or we're just drifting a little bit that, but, but people might cross shop these two. And that quad yep. has the potential to fly r pretty well. But like, I thought that the default setup, especially thinking about a beginner, it's a $129 kit. It's not probably being marketed to, you know, balls of the wall racers. I was surprised at like the angle mode you could go like all the way over. I was like, why did you set, set it up like that for somebody who's just getting started? So, right. and I think, and that's the, that's the thing is that what we did this kit for is not somebody who wants to just dabble in, um, as their first quad. Right. It's more, you know what? I want to really start to get into racing. I'm nervous about spending a bunch of money and breaking motors on the brushless and figuring out do i need jesc and blah blah right. blah blah blah, right right and i'm thinking okay what's the minimum kit that you can actually go be competitive and that's just right. what i showed you is something like that and not right. even like the tiny hawk rtf kit or something like that i think this will be everything to, out there that, is I, that level. I, I i have to tell you i agree the tiny hawk is a great ready to fly kit for someone who wants to get into fpv but if yep. your focus is racing, I I raced, and I'm not the fastest guy out there. I raced in a Tiny Whoop race against a bunch of people, many of whom were faster than me. And I got lucky that the guys who were faster than me were flying Tiny Hawks, and I was flying a Meteor 65. And mm -hmm. the extra weight of those Tiny Hawks slowed them down so much in the corners that I actually won that race. Yeah. So yep. the Tiny Hawk is a great quad, but I would not recommend it oh, to it somebody who is serious about getting into whip racing. Even though they right, were running 2S. They were running 2S. Oh, man. <laughs> and I was running a 1S, and I yeah. still beat them. Not, and, and not because I'm a better pilot than them. Not to put myself right, down and too much. Kind of to <laughs> the same point, right? You're underpowered in that race, yep. but it's the same kind of thing. You've gone up from the Miata to maybe a Porsche, but it's not like you know the high-end Porsche. Yeah, but you're still beating out a supercar because you know how to handle the power and there's well, and like power. They just they had power for the straights. If it had been a different course, they would have won. There were enough corners and not enough straights. If it was a more wide open course with more straights, yep. they would their power would have would have overcome me. But they just couldn't do it. So yeah, and what I want you to do with this kit is be at a point where you're like this isn't fast enough. Right. And when you're when like you get to that point, when you're like full throttle on. around the whole course, right? Yep. When and you're not literally crashing. not dropping the <laughs> throttle at all, and you're like, okay, how do I go faster? Then it's time to exactly. upgrade. Nice. Exactly. All right. All right. Well, Patrick, I sure appreciate your time and talking to us about this quadcopter. I actually have not gotten to fly it yet because I'm having, well, it's silverware, which means that if and when it doesn't get work right for some reason, you can't plug it into the computer and look at it. So uh, as a tech guy, that annoys me a little bit, but um, I'm not going to let that sour the experience. I'm looking forward to flying it and getting to experience it for myself. Cool. Looking yeah. forward to hearing how you feel about it. Cool. All right, man. Thank you. Have a good night. Then Thank Thanks you. for all you all do. Right, you thanks for all hey. you do, by the way. Uh, you do a ton of work to help people whose quadcopters, whether you buy this or whether you buy 
any other, almost any other micro, check out Patrick's website first. I would dare say that the existence of a Project Mockingbird tune could be a deciding factor in getting one quadcopter versus another. So check out, I'll put the link to your website down in the video description as well. Uh, awesome. and people can look at all the quads you've tuned. And they'll ask me, what about this quad? Can I what? Have when, is your, when is your tune coming out for the such and such and <laughs> such and such? I have a job! <laughs> Now, there are, there's plenty of stuff coming. I took the summer off to fly um, some freestyle for myself. Nice, nice. <laughs> and people are like, no, we need you back. I'm like, we need more tunes. They keep making quadcopters. Please tune them for us. <laughs> exactly. There will be more. Do you have a, do you have, like, you do all this work. Do you have a Patreon or anything like that? How can, no, do, can I, people you know what I do, Joshua? I have people buy that shirt that you're wearing. Um, oh, that, do you know what? Me. I'm wearing your shirt. Thank you. You sent yeah. me this shirt, by the way. Literally, I looked down at myself this afternoon and went, "Oh, how cool! I have the interview with Patrick tonight." I didn't plan this. I literally just That's reached hilarious. in the closet, and this was the shirt that came out. But then I was like, yeah. "Oh, great! Yeah, eh, all right." That fortuitous. Yep, I yeah. get money from that, and then also I do make tiny, tiny bits off of this guy. But I'm not yeah. in it for the money. It just. Really, that's why newbie drones really been good to me because they're like, "Hey, what can we give you to get a tune out there for our stuff?" And yeah. it's been great awesome. working with them. So awesome. There you go. Well, we'll put links right. to all this stuff down in the video description. Thank you, Patrick. I'm gonna let you go. Have a good night. All right, Bye, everybody. You too, sir. Bye. 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 What are you still doing here? The video's over. Do you watch all the videos all the way to the end? Wow. You are a super fan. Thank you. That actually helps the channel a lot when you watch the videos all the way to the end. YouTube loves that. You know what else YouTube loves? When you subscribe. Or when you join my Patreon for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned... Actually, YouTube doesn't like you to join my Patreon. They don't get a cut of that.